Välkomna tillbaka till den här bolagsdagen på Erik Penser Bank. Nästa bolag på tur är Nordnet. Och med oss via länk har vi bolagets vd Lars Åke Norling. Varsågod Lars Åke. Thank you. So, first a little short introduction of myself. Uh, long experience of leading tech companies, mainly in telecom. Uh, I joined Nordnet as CEO in September 2019. And what made Nordnet really interesting for me was uh, uh, number one, it was digital uh, and its growth. Uh, it's a challenger, but also that we do something really good for our customers. We help them to succeed with their savings and investments. Can go to next. Next. So I'm going to start with a short uh, introduction to Nordnet, uh, and then I'm going to uh, go more into more investment highlights about the company. So we can go to next. Uh, so Nordnet, uh, we have a strong position for the future. We are the leading digital savings and in, in, in investment platform in the Nordics. And we have a, a very strong position in all the big Nordic countries with the liked and trusted brand. We see also really great growth, uh, both in customers, in savings capital on our platform, and of course, not the least in, in revenue. And this is uh, sustained by a good underlying growth of the savings market overall in the Nordics, but also a very strong digitization trend in the Nordics. Uh, we also have very good operating leverage uh, and scalability in the business. So we grow revenues in a good way, but, and at the same time, we keep the cost flat in absolute terms. And, and that's a true position of profitable growth. Uh, we don't tie up a lot of capital uh, when we grow, so we're capital light, and that, of course, allows for good shareholder returns also over time. And we have guided for a dividend of 70% uh, of, of the yearly net profit. Can go to next. So why uh, do we exist as a company? What's our purpose? And uh, we are here to democratize savings and investments. And we do that to innovation and we ch to challenge and traditional structures, mainly than the big banks and pension companies. And we give the private service and investors the information, tools and products they need to, to succeed with their investments, same as professionals before. And this has been our guiding star since the launch of the company. Go to next. A few data points on Nordnet. We were founded in 1996. Uh, we are the leading uh, digital platform for savings and investments across Nordics. Uh, and savings and investments as our core focus, uh, but we have some complementary loan products as well. We run 570 employees uh, with all the core functions uh, centralized in Stockholm. So we have one product, we have one tech, and one tech platform covering all the Nordic countries. And the local offices are fairly small, focusing on sales, marketing, and customer service. Uh, we also have a long-term uh, committed uh, shareholder uh, in Öhman and Dinkerspiel family. They were part of founding the company. And they are also a major shareholder now uh, when we are in the listed environment uh, uh, again, uh, uh, and also long-term uh, there. Uh, we have uh, roughly 600 billion SEC in savings capital uh, on our platform and around 1.3 million customers currently across Nordic. We can go to next. Uh, and Nordnet, uh, we were a listed company from 2001 to uh, January 2017 when the company was taken private. And the main reason for taking the, the company private was to do a major transformation of the business, especially a big modernization of, of our digital platform. And the company was taken private at that time by Erman and the Inkerspiel family and, and the private equity company Nordic Capital. And since then, a lot has happened. Uh, we have launched a new app in all countries. We launched a new web in all countries, and we also modernized the backend systems. And all this, this all, all of this has led to uh, uh, great improvement in customer experience, but also in scalability in our business overall. Uh, we also sped up product development and launched a large number of quite exciting products in the last couple of years. Uh, also strengthened the, the team, uh, both the management team and, and underneath, and especially within product and tech. Uh, so we have more people in product and tech now, and, and the right people in product and tech. Uh, and we overall now have a very good product and tech organization. Uh, and that's, of course, key if you're a digital platform and are going to succeed as a digital platform. 
We also solidified and strengthened our pan-Nordic market position. We are a clear number one in Norway, Denmark, and Finland uh, when it comes to MPS and customer satisfaction. And we have a strong number two position in Sweden, so overall the number one position in the Nordics. Uh, we also now have critical mass and profitable growth in all of our countries. And in Norway, we acquired our main competitor, Netfonds, in 2019 and integrated that fully into the company also in 2019. Uh, and this transformation was in a large part done in uh, 2020. And the owners then decided uh, to, uh, it was time to relist the company. And we relisted and IPO'd again uh, on Stockholm uh, Nasdaq uh, in November uh, last year. We can go to next. Uh, and we see now uh, a, a great acceleration of growth uh, from 2019 and onwards, both when it comes to new customers and savings capital uh, on our platform. So both new customers, but also the customers bring a lot of money from the traditional banks onto our platform. And there's a few reasons for this. One is, of course, the modernization we've done on the platform and, and the great improvement in customer experience. But we also see a very strong digitization trend in the Nordics, of course, accelerated even further with, with COVID. Uh, but also a very large interest in savings investments overall in the Nordic region. And what has happened also for us is that we have reached a tipping point in all uh, the countries outside of Sweden. So we, have, we are large enough, and that's really also affected and impacted the, the growth in a positive way. Can go to next. And we believe in, in focus to, to succeed. Uh, and we focus on savings investments. Uh, that's our core focus. We have some complementary loan products, but we're never go, going to go into full service banking. Also, private individual, that's our core group. Uh, we do have some smaller enterprises, uh, mainly entrepreneurial companies, but the, the, the private investor is, is the main focus uh, uh, customer segment. Uh, we focus on the Nordic region. We have currently around 5% market share, share here, so we have ample room to grow. We don't need to open a lot of new countries to, to grow. And we're going to remain digital. We're not going to open any physical branch offices. Uh, we only focus on digital products that really scale. Go to next. Uh, and our uh, aim is to have a, a one-stop shop for uh, savings and investments and really good customer experience through our app and the web. And with us, you can trade in a large uh, number of different instruments on, on, a, on a number of different markets. We have the largest fund offering also in the Nordics with more than 2,000 mutual funds on our platform. Um, we have pension solution, uh, occupational pension solutions in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Uh, we have also margin lending uh, where you can borrow on your portfolio. Uh, in Sweden, we also have retail lending, and the main product there is mortgage, where, the, where, where we have the lowest interest rate of 69 BIPs in the Swedish market currently. And then we have Shareville, our social investment platform that uh, is unique for us. Uh, no one has, has that in the Nordics, uh, where you as a customer can share your portfolio or portfolios uh, uh, and also make comments. And it's very popular uh, with our investment community. Can go to next. So now I'm going to go through uh, investment highlights. I'm going to start with a summary and then go through some deep dives uh, in the coming slides. You can go to next. So what then makes uh, Nordnet unique? Uh, we see, I mean, it's really uh, attractive market. The savings market in Nordis is big and it's growing. Uh, we are the only pan-Nordic digital investment savings platform at scale, which I talked about. Uh, we focus a lot on customer experience. That, that's to have the best customer experience is key for us, and that's also allowed us to grow market share and, and, and uh, created also higher engagement with our customers. And we have a very profitable customer growth. Uh, we're going to talk more about that uh, in the coming slides. And our tech platform now, uh, from the modernization, is really agile and scalable. We can onboard a lot of new customers without driving costs, but also high agility. We launch a new app every nine days and basically new features in the web every day. And we have a very strong competitive mode. We've, we've been now in all the Nordic countries for more than 15 years and during that time built a very strong position with, with a, a liked and trusted brand. And we have now scalability in all the countries and we have all the local offerings also needed in, in, in all of our countries. Uh, 
ESG and sustainability is, of course, very important for us. Nothing we do on the side, but it is a part of our core business. And it's built on a fundament and our purpose uh, to democratize savings and investments. And then, uh, which I also touched upon, very good operating leverage and overall scalability in the business. So now I'm going to go through some of those areas in more detail. So we can go to next. Starting with the market, um, and the Nordic savings market is big. It's around 31 trillion sec, and that's a lot of money, growing around 5% per year. Our addressable market is around one third of that, so around, around 10 trillion sec. Uh, we have excluded some pension products, uh, private equity, and some bonds. And that uh, sub market is growing even more, 6 to 7% per year. But then to the right, you see the growth uh, with, when it comes to digital platforms, such as our, as our own growing considerably faster than the market with 12 to 17% per year from this strong digitization trend. Uh, but still, we only have around 5% market share of the adjustable market in the Nordics. We have ample room to grow for many years uh, to come. Go to next. So we split up this addressable market uh, uh, on the different countries. Uh, we see Sweden is the largest market, around 4 trillion sec. And then we have around 2 trillion sec each in the other countries. So for us, being Nordic, instead of just uh, focusing on Sweden, that uh, opens up a market that's two and a half times larger. And since we are the only Nordic player at scale, that gives us, of course, a great growth potential uh, for the future. Can go to next. Um, and here, um, a little bit on our revenue distribution, which is, is well di distributed, uh, with Sweden around 40% of the revenues and 20% each in the other countries. If you look at the middle graph there, you see the customer growth the last year, and you see a, a fantastic growth in the countries outside of Sweden, where, as, what I said, we reached scale and a tipping point. Uh, so uh, Norway was the highest growth with 76, or Denmark was the highest growth with 76% in one year, and then followed by Norway with 56%. Still okay growth in Sweden when we're with around 9% growth in the customer base year on year. Uh, and also in Sweden, we, we take in very good customers, high value customers. Uh, if you look at the, to the chart to the right there, you also see where we have the highest growth in, in Norway and Denmark. We also have the highest margin. So overall, that, of course, contributes to, to strengthening our revenue margin overall in the company. And the reason for higher margins outside of Sweden is that it's more cross-border trading in Norway, Denmark, and Finland, where we have higher margins. So in Sweden, you mainly trade in Stockholm and you trade uh, in, in the US. Uh, in, in Finland, Norway, and Denmark, you trade on the local exchange, but then you trade in Stockholm, which is a, a popular exchange, and in the US. Can go to next. So our main focus is to build the best platform for savings and investments. So that's something we work hard with every day. Uh, and that's starting, of course, with, with the back end uh, uh, that we now build in the clouds. So it's very modern and scalable. We uh, automate everything we can from, sm from small things to, to, to all the major processes. Um, we, uh, of course, focus on launching cutting edge financial products uh, all the time and over time. And all this we present then through our Delight for Digital Channels, our, our web, our app, and also our social investment platform, Shareable. Can go to next. And uh, all of this uh, focus on the platform and improved experiences also uh, created more engagement uh, with our customers. And we see that the app is becoming more and more popular. It's doubled the amount of users in just one year, so from 250,000 to 500,000. And the traded value has also been doubled in the app uh, in one year. Also, from launching the new web, uh, we see also a, a quite higher uh, activity per customer from, from, uh, from that launch. You see that down to the left. But also overall, to having this focus on customer experience also allowed us to, to grow market share considerably in all the countries uh, over the last years. And like I said, also the number one on the MPS in, Sweden, in Denmark, Finland, and Norway, and, and strong number two in Sweden. Can go to next. And we, we, we drive the financial education and, uh, uh, via our savings economies, which are very visible in, uh, in each country. In Sweden, you probably all have seen Frida Bratt talking about uh, 
savings and investment questions that are important to the customers. Uh, we have Alexander Gustafsson uh, focusing on uh, the private banking segment and Axel focusing mainly on the on trader segment. But we have a similar setup in the other countries. You can go to next. And we also have a very big community, a savings investment community with more than 500,000 members. And that's everything from our blog, pods, videos, but also, of course, the, our shareable uh, network. Uh, and this is a very active community, and we pub publish also a lot of content in this community every day. Go to next. Uh, and that's, this has also allowed uh, us to have a very profitable customer growth. Uh, the, the main inflow from us is organic search that we don't pay for. Uh, so we have very limited paid search. Uh, we also see a low, very low churn on our platform. We have a churn of around 2% per year, per year, so the stickiness is very high. And all of this is, is leading uh, to a good acquisition cost, a low acquisition cost, of around 300 uh, kronos per customer. And at the same time, also with the low churn, a high lifetime value for the customers on our platform of uh, discount around 18,000 sec. So a, a popular measure is to have lifetime value versus acquisition costs for digital companies. And we, we are at 60 turns, which is, is very high. And normally, if you're about four turns, you're, you're starting to get into the right territory. So this is, we have a very good profitable customer growth model. Can go to next. And we also see here is a little bit uh, the customer uh, base as a blue, blue line, and we average around 35 years uh, average age, which is slightly younger than population in total. The customers we take in, the red line is slightly younger still. Uh, but what we see when the, the customers age on the platform, they accumulate a lot of capital over time. So just having the customers on the platform and aging on the platform will, will allow uh, accumulation of capital on our platform and additional growth for NodeNet. Go to next. And all of this then it has led to, to a very uh, scalable and, and, and profitable growth model, starting then from the revenue growth uh, to, to the left, uh, where we see around 40% CAGR on revenue growth uh, the last couple of years, uh, arising then from, from the customer growth that we have, very strong customer growth, but also savings capital growth on the platform, and also that the customers bring in a lot of new capital from their existing banks and pension companies onto our platform. Uh, we, at the same time, we, we focus a lot on scalability and built in good scalability in the platform. So even though the revenue has been growing uh, in a good way, the, the cost has been flat in absolute terms. So the, the entire revenue growth has then ended up uh, on, on the bottom line, uh, which then allows, of course, of a, a extremely good profit development of a CAGR of more than 200% per year. Uh, so that's a true position of a profitable growth. So uh, with that, uh, uh, we con conclude this presentation. I think we move into Q&A. Perfect. Thank for den presentationen, Lars Åke. Uh, jag tänkte börja med att ta lite frågor som jag har fått in från webben här. Um, ja. Om vi börjar titta på de nordiska marknaderna, finns det något land som ni satsar lite extra mycket på? Och i så fall vilket? Nej, vi, vi satsar ungefär lika mycket på, på alla länder som vi säger. Vi har en tech-plattform som täcker alla länder också. Eh, det vi har sett eh, däremot nu är att vi har nått liksom, tillräckligt skala i alla länder. Och då blir det en tipping point, vilket gjort att tillväxten har tagit fart eh, på ett väldigt starkt sätt i, i länderna utanför Sverige. Det var i Sverige vi startade mm. först. Så vi har fantastisk tillväxt nu i, i, i regioner. Mm. Alltså härligt. Om man tittar på konkurrenssituationen så tror jag att det är många som känner till Avanza också som är konkurrenter, framförallt på den svenska marknaden. H ja. Hur ser det ut i de övriga nordiska länderna? Vilka konkurrerar ni med där och, och hur ser det ut? Ja, så i, I Norge så har vi två konkurrenter. Det är Pareto, eh, lite mer eh, riktade mot heavy traders. Vi, vi har en bredare plattform och, och täcker större kundgrupper. Eh, sen är S-banken mer fokuserad på digitala bolån. I Danmark så är det Saxo Bank. Eh, också de lite mer eh, riktade mot, mot heavy trading-segmentet än vad vi är. Eh, 
Och sen i Finland så, så är vi den stora digitala plattformen. Konkurrenterna är ganska små. Jag förstår. Om man tittar på eh, 2020 eh, så var det ett fantastiskt år om man tittar på handelsvolymerna som fördubblades nästan. Ser du någon sen, risk liksom, om man blickar framåt att när samhället sen kan öppna upp igen att, att det där blir någon bakslag på, på den där tillväxten? Eller hur, hur parerar ni i så fall det? Ja, det, det är flera delar här. Vi har ju haft en fantastisk kundtillväxt. Efter februari så har vi växt kunder ungefär 40 procent på ett år. Vilket gör att den kundbasen kommer vi att vara med oss och de kommer att vara aktiva även framåt. Sen, även om aktiviteten går ner på kund något så kommer vi att ha en helt annan ny normal nivå tack vare den stora kundbasen. Sen tror jag att den här digitaliseringstrenden som är väldigt stark i Norden och som också även accelererat, den kommer att fortsätta vara stark. Jag tror inte det kommer att sakta ner. Och intresse för sparande investeringar tror jag också är här framöver. Så att jag ser fortsatt stor tillväxt. Sen kan ju aktiviteten per kund gå ner något. Men, 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 men med den stora kundbas vi har nu så kommer det ha ett helt nytt normalt läge. Om man blickar lite framåt, har ni några planer på att liksom utöka ert geografiska område? Så finns det länder utanför Norden som ni börjar kika på som skulle kunna vara intressanta att eventuellt kliva in? Nej, inte just nu eftersom vi har ju väldigt stort utrymme att växa i Norden. Vi har ju 5 procents marknadsandel ungefär. Och vi vet också att det, det, det tar tid och, 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 och ganska stor investering att, att öppna ett nytt land. Det har tagit oss nästan upp till 10-15 år att nå liksom lönsam tillväxt i alla våra länder. Så att vi, vårt fokus nu i kort och medellånga perspektiv är att fortsätta växa i Norden. Och vi har ju när det ser bara marknader på 10 triljoner eller biljoner kronor. Då. Mm. Så att det är en väldigt stor att se bara marknaden. Mm. Jag förstår. Tack så mycket Lars Håke att du var här idag. Och tack för att ni har tittat. Tack.